if you have a transition metal as your cation, it becomes a little bit more complicated and you have to apply a different set of rules, what we call a variant charged cation. The word variant here means that it varies, right? So sometimes it could be positive 1, positive 2, etc. Whereas when you are main group element in the first category that we talked about, that's called an invariant. It doesn't change. If you are in group 1A, you always will be positive 1. If you are in group 2A, you're always going to be positive 2 as cations. But when you are a transition metal, all bets are off. So to combat this, we have to use something called Roman numerals to tell us what is the actual charge of that cation. And to know the charge of the cation, you would have to be given the charge or the charge is implied in an ionic compound, in which case you have to derive the charge. So for example here, when you have CO, CO2, what is the charge of that CO? If ionic compound has two chlorides and only one cobalt, that must mean that the cobalt is a two positive charge. How do I know that? Well, because each chloride we know is invariant. It will always be negative one. So if it is negative one and there's two of it, the negative charge in there is negative two. So to balance it out, the cobalt must be a positive two. Positive two plus negative two is zero. So that is a very important step. You must know what is the charge of your cation. You must know that the anion charge will always be the same. And from the charge of the anion and how many anions you have, you can figure out what is the charge of your cation. So in this case, we have decided that it's going to be cobalt 2 plus. So to name it, you simply again give the name of the metal. In this case, it's cobalt. Next, you want to put the charge of that cation in a parentheses in Roman numerals. In this case, it is Roman numeral 2, and then the rest of the name is nothing new. You put the base name, which is chlor, and then end it with I. So this is cobalt 2 chloride. Let's do another example. How about COCl3? How would you write the name of this compound? Again, first realize that cobalt is a transition metal, so it is going to have variant charges. So in order to know its charge, we look at its anion. In this case, we have three chlorides giving us a negative three charge. So cobalt must be positive three. If cobalt is positive three, this is going to be called cobalt three chloride. Okay, so let's recap what we have talked about so far. We talked about the main group elements when they become ions, they will be invariant ions. So again, let's take a look at the metal side. If you're in group 1A or in group 2A, you are a main group element of metals, so you will always have the same charge. Group 1A will always have positive 1, group 2A will always be positive 2. And if you are if you are in group 7A, you are always negative 1, group 6A, you are negative 2, group 5A, you are negative 3. You will never change, that's why it's called invariant. As opposed to when you are a transition element, when you become a cation, you will have various charges. Some example given here, chromium, you can be 2 plus or 3 plus, Manganese, you can be 2 or 3 plus. Iron, you can be 2 or 3 plus, so on and so forth. Well, it turns out there are also exceptions that you should memorize. There are three transition metals that are different. They will always have the same charge, just like the main group element. And those three elements are zinc, cadmium, and silver. Zinc will always be a 2 plus, cadmium will always be a 2 plus, and silver will always be a 1 plus. Because they are invariant, when you name them, you do not need Roman numerals. All right, let's try to see if you can do this backwards. If I give you the chemical compound name, can you write the chemical formula? So in our first example here, let's go with nickel 2 chloride. You first need to identify the charges in your ion. Nickel 2 tells you that the nickel has a positive 2 charge. And chloride, you know, will always be negative 1. Knowing that you have nickel 2 plus and chloride minus, what's the ratio that will give you charge balance? So that's something we've done before in the first category, right? So that becomes NiCl2. You need two chlorides to balance out with the 1, 2 plus nickel. What about the second case? Nickel 3 chloride. Then you need to find out what the charge of the cation is. In this case, nickel 3 means it's nickel 3 plus. So therefore, that is NiCl3. I want to emphasize what the 2 and 3 mean in the name. The 2 and the 3 means that's the charge of the metal. A common mistake that students often make is they think that that 2 is a subscript. 
So for nickel 2 chloride, they write nickel subscript 2 Cl. And for nickel 3 chloride, they write nickel subscript 3 Cl. So don't make that mistake. Now let's talk about trickier cases. For example, if I have a compound composed of iron and oxygen, we first recognize that iron is a transition metal. So we can't simply say iron oxide. We have to say what is the charge of that iron. To find out the charge of the cation, always take a look at the anion. In this case, it is oxygen 2 minus. Since there's only one oxygen 2 minus, the charge of the negative is 2 minus. So you ask yourself, what must the charge of the iron be to cancel out this? And the answer for this is that iron must be a positive 2 charge, giving us the name iron 2 oxide. The 2 again says that the iron is a positive 2 charge. Another example. Fe2O3. The oxygen still has a negative 2 charge. In this case though, there are 3 oxygens, so 3 times 2 minus is negative 6. To cancel out that negative 6, you must have positive 6 contributing from your iron. In this case, the subscript on the iron is 2. So, if you have 2 ions of atom, it must add up to positive 6. So what must each of those iron ion charge be? The answer is it must be positive 3 because 2 times positive 3 will give you positive 6. Again, the iron will give you positive 6. The oxygen will give you negative 6. Positive 6 plus negative 6 is 0. So that tells you that is the correct charge of iron in this case, giving us the name iron 3 oxide. The 3 again signifies the charge of the iron. I would say that many students will struggle with this and with enough practice and the questions you may ask in class, hopefully this will become clear to you.